live from KSAT 12. The 6 o'clock news starts right now. Tonight, San Antonio homicide investigators with a major change of gears in the case of a missing pregnant teenager, Savannah Soto, as well as her boyfriend, Matthew Guerra. Those two now confirmed dead. And we're learning new details of what happened to them. That news coming late this afternoon, just as a vigil was set to take place for Savannah and her baby. We have team coverage tonight. Our Avery Everett is standing by at Kenwood Park where that vigil wrapped up with tears and high emotion. But first, we want to go to Daniela Ibarra at SAPD headquarters. She was there as the police chief, William McManus, revealed how the two died and an important clue, a video in what is now a double capital murder case. Daniela. Well, Ursula, I want to start by saying so far, San Antonio police have not named any suspects in what they're calling a double capital murder. But that surveillance video that you mentioned that we're about to show you, they're hoping it will help them find a lead. Now, this video, Chief McManus says, was taken days before Savannah and Matthew were found and is also taken nearby where their bodies were found. Now, you'll see two cars, a silver Kia Optima and a dark pickup truck, a Silverado. Now, that Kia, it's the same car that the chief says Savannah and Matthew were found dead in on Tuesday. You'll see someone get out of the pickup truck and go up to the Kia. Police are calling the two people you see in that video people of interest. And right now the chief says this case is being investigated as a double capital murder. And the medical examiner, they say that Savannah Soto had a gunshot wound to the head and says her manner of death is a homicide. As for Matthew Guerra, the medical examiner says it was a contact gunshot wound. It means that it was there. Um, um, when we talk about the, the manner of death has not been determined, the manner meaning was it a suicide or was it a murder? So that's what the ME has yet to officially put out. The chief says detectives are doing everything they can to solve this case. They're asking anyone with information about this incident or the cars that you saw in that video to call them that number 210-224-STOP. We're live from San Antonio Police Headquarters, Daniela Ibarra, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Daniela. Earlier this afternoon, a vigil for Savannah Soto and her unborn child brought out family, friends and supporters. Our Avery Everett is live at Kenwood Park where that vigil has wrapped up. But I noticed there's still some people there, Avery. The family was watching that press conference with the police chief as those details were being revealed. What was their reaction? <laughs> Well, Ursula, this family is set on honoring Savannah and her unborn son, Fabian, even if they're still hurting. I mean, I want you to take a look at this makeshift memorial just right behind me. Candles, toys, flowers for both 18-year-old Savannah and baby Fabian. And then right next to it is a tree that was dedicated to Savannah's brother, Ethan, who was shot and killed. You said it, Ursula. I mean, it's been a long day for the Soto family. I was there with Savannah's father as she watched that news conference. And devastated is just the beginning of describing how this family feels. And I know one day we'll be up there together seeing each other again. But for now we don't. And we won't see her anymore. Only in pictures. It will never be the It will never be the same again. The community here released balloons and doves and even handed out flowers and candles to remember those two. They say that they will never forget those two individuals and they're making sure that they will. We'll continue to keep you updated right here on the Night Beat tonight with the rest of this vigil. But for now, reporting live, I'm Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Avery. That vigil going on to its second hour now. It's a problem that's getting worse and worse by the year. Card skimmers, you've heard about them, and some of you may have even been scammed by them. Lee Weldman with the telltale signs where these secretly placed devices are hiding and how to protect yourself from an attack. We use these valuable plastic cards seemingly every day for all kinds of things, groceries, shopping, at the gas pump. But the convenience comes with a risk, now more prevalent than ever. The Fair Isaac Corporation, better known as FICO, found that debit card skimming soared from 2021 to 2022 by 368 percent. For the first half of 2023, those numbers were even higher than the same time the year before by 77 percent. In November, San Antonio police arrested Alejandro Roman Vivar for putting card skimmers on gas pumps at this quick trip on North Foster Road. 
Back in April, Hollywood Park Police Department posted on its Facebook page, warning people of a skimmer at a Circle K convenience store. It was a unique type of skimmer that is placed on the card receptacle, and the person who placed it doesn't need to be nearby. So what should you do? When you're pulling up to the gas station, there's a few things you should keep your eyes out for when it comes to protecting yourself from skimmers. First, check to see if there's a security seal along the panel. Then look to where you're gonna put your card in. If there's an external reader, go ahead, give it a tug. See if anything comes loose. Now, when you go to type in your pin over at the keypad, make sure to cover the top with your other hand just in case a camera has been installed. But the gas station isn't the only place where you can find a skimmer. Skimming at bank ATMs is up 109% year over year. According to FICO, these types of skimmers are making up more of the compromised locations they are seeing. Texas as a whole had an increase of over 50% in compromised card readers, making it one of the top five states where this is happening. If you think you've been the victim of a card skimmer, give your bank a call and report to local authorities. I'm Lee Waldman, KSAT 12 News. Tonight, a man facing a number of serious charges after police say that he assaulted his ex-girlfriend, then shot her new boyfriend, all while his children were nearby. According to SAPD, the woman and the man went to Jeffrey Outlaw's apartment to pick up her kids yesterday afternoon. The man told police that Outlaw assaulted the woman, and when he tried to intervene, Outlaw allegedly shot him in the arm. Outlaw now charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, endangering a child, deadly conduct, and felon in possession of a firearm. Tonight, a second suspect is behind bars for a deadly road rage shooting one year ago. Jail records showing Alberto Aguirre is charged with the murder of Joanne Quiroga. The shooting happened in December of 2022 on Lebanon Street on the city's south side. SAPD says Aguirre and Joe Longoria stopped Quiroga's car and shot him while he was inside. Both Aguirre and Longoria are awaiting trial. In a major development, New York City Mayor Eric Adams now issuing new requirements for charter buses who carry asylum seekers from Texas as the city is experiencing a surging migrant crisis. The executive order signed by Adams today will require that bus companies provide details about the people they are transporting. They will be required to give 32 hours notice before they come to the city. The executive order also requires charter bus companies to drop off asylum seekers in Manhattan only between 8.30 a.m. till 12 p.m. Monday through Friday. Those that don't comply will now face a Class B misdemeanor. This is not stopping people from coming, but about ensuring the safety of migrants and making sure they can arrive in a coordinated and orderly way. Last week, New York City experienced what the mayor's office says is the highest one-day total of migrant buses showing up. Looking outside with live cam, another pretty day out there. Um, and it looks like we might even have a nice sunset. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's been really nice. We've got some good colors out there. Sun's uh, obviously already set and uh, we'll see temperatures fall off pretty quickly here uh, over the next couple of hours. But what a day. I mean, it was gorgeous out there. We had blue skies. Sun was out in full force. Got our temperatures in the 60s today. This is a picture that came in on our case at Connect. And yeah, that is nice. We appreciate it. Uh, let's take a look at the time lapse here over the last uh, hour or so. And yeah, it was a nice sunset. Temperatures uh, today made their way up to around 63 for a high. The low this morning, 37. I think we'll go a little bit colder by tomorrow morning. But this is pretty average for this time of year. We've got some more good weather as we head towards New Year's Eve, plus some rain chances next week, too. We'll take a look at it coming up in just a bit. Ursula. Thank you, Justin. We want to take a look at traffic. At this hour, people, a lot of them still out on vacation, so we're not seeing any big tie ups. This is 281 at the quarry. It was showing a big backup not too long ago uh, around five o'clock. But look at that now. No traffic. A lot of people already downtown for the Alamo Bowl. We have a community that's striving to become better skilled, more educated. In our next half hour, how our local company or organization is recruiting and retaining high wage jobs in San Antonio. 
It's tonight at 6.30. But first, a San Antonio nonprofit making it cool to be a dork or have a dork. That stands for Downtowners Overdose Response Kit. And we're going to take a look at how Corazon Ministries overdose training is working, how they're targeting people and what comes in the kit after the break. This Essay Salutes Holiday Greeting is brought to you by Rodriguez Trial Law. Hi, I'm Fidel Rodriguez Jr. with Rodriguez Trial Law. We would like to thank all active and ex-military members for your service and sacrifice. Blessed holidays to all. The benefits of speaking more than one language. It pays for itself. Tonight on the Night View, we're going to take a look at the health benefits and the career advantages that come with being bilingual. It is bowl season, and the Oklahoma Sooners and Arizona Wildcats take it to the field at the Valero Alamo Bowl. It's tonight. Tonight on the Night View, we're going to take a look at the economic impact of this huge game. This and more on the Night View at 10. A San Antonio nonprofit is making it cool to be a dork, but it's not what you think. The acronym sounds for, stands for Downtowner Overdose Response Kit. And as John Paul Baraja shows us, a nonprofit is helping hotel, bar, restaurant, and other service workers to know what to do, when to do it, when faced with an overdosing customer. And that's going to include um, nasal spray, naloxone. Learning new things doesn't make you a dork. It makes me feel empowered and, you know, knowledge is power. And learning how to respond to an overdose and administer Narcan doesn't either. But training at a modern Terno in Southtown this week sent participants home with just that. A downtowner's overdose response kit, a.k.a. a dork. I was at, at a music festival a couple years ago and no one really knew what to do. Vincent Guerrero and dozens of others wanted to learn just that how to save someone from an overdose. According to the CDC, from January 2021 to January 2022, more than 107,000 people died of an overdose in the U.S. Being, being a survivor of an overdose, um, being, being brought back to life by uh, using Narcan, um, people helping, helping save my life by utilizing Narcan, um, it, it, it's really a passion of mine today. Scott Dion and Tina Rodriguez with Corazon Ministries is targeting service industry employees to train saying for those employees, seeing drug use is more prevalent. But at anyone who is able to identify the signs of an overdose could save a life. Pale skin, um, gurgling, coughing, uh, sleepiness, drowsiness, pinpointed pupils. With the fentanyl today, right, it, it's, it's cut in almost in anything and everything, right, from the cocaine to the methamphetamines to the heroin, and they're even sprinkling it in the marijuana. Downtown overdose response kit comes with a nasal spray and injections to help prevent overdoses, as well as a breathing barrier to help provide oxygen. To request one of those kits or in-person training, you can go to Gordeson Ministries' website. We'll have a link to that on ksat.com. John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. Taking a look outside with weather authority cameras. You can see the entire day has just been absolutely stunning, Justin. And yep. welcome to the 6 o'clock show. Normally we're working together on the <laughs> noon show, but we're shuffling people around a little bit because we've got holiday staffing. Mm -hmm. A little bit of a shift. Can and it make you stay up late tonight? Uh, we'll see if that... <laughs> We'll see how that works. I'm already feeling a little bit sleepy. I'm good. Uh, I, we do have to talk about the summer. I know it's been so nice. We don't want to think back to what it was like. Uh, it was so hot this summer. But as we wind down 2023, I want to show you some of the superlatives that we can say about this year. And it does look like we're going to go in the record books as the hottest year since records have been kept in San Antonio. Our average temperature is 72.7. Uh, and these records date back to 1885, if you were curious. Uh, last year was very hot. This year, even hotter. Incredible. Hopefully 2024 is not that way. Uh, as we look at the rainfall, we will finish with about 20 inches, 20.01 uh, to be exact. That is the 28th driest on record. So we did a little bit better than last year, which was the driest on record. It's been a rough stretch, honestly, the last couple of years. So we're hoping that 2024 brings some good news and good weather. 59 right now. We've got light winds out there, mostly clear. What a great evening if you're heading out to the Alamo Bowl. Looks great. Tailgating will be fun out there. Uh, temperatures 60, Converse, 58 Stinson, 58 Bulverde, 59 Canyon Lakes. We're on our way down. 
after temperatures made their way into the low 60s this afternoon. And we've got mostly clear skies in most spots. So with clear skies, dry air, temperatures will fall off quickly tonight. And I do think a lot of spots will be down close to freezing. Here in San Antonio, we're forecasting 35, but the outlying areas certainly could briefly touch freezing. 30 in Boulevard, 31 Canyon Lake, 30 in Juan and Gonzalez. Uh, maybe down to freezing around seven as well 32 there and then of course the hill country i expect some 20s on the map by tomorrow morning so it'll be a chilly start then as we go th throughout your friday another perfect day 57 at noon time and then we'll be up around 62 almost exactly like today carbon copy for your friday so uh continues the great weather continues uh here's a look at the satellite and radar we do have some showers across north texas still part of a big upper level low that's spinning over the Midwest, bringing some snow just west of Chicago, some cold rain across parts of Michigan. And then we did have some heavy rain earlier across the Northeast. Then a new storm system moving on board across the West Coast, bringing rain and wind there. We're in the middle where the weather is great. Now that sy system off the West Coast will push in our direction and push a front through. Looks like New Year's Eve. So dry air sticks with us until Sunday when we get a little bit of moisture out ahead of that front. It's not enough, though, to give us rain, unfortunately. It's going to be a dry front. So dry next couple of days. Here comes that front. And as it moves a little bit closer by Sunday, uh, it looks like that uh, any rain will be east of us, and then it turns breezy. And I think this front moves through right as we ring in the new year, by the way. So it turns kind of windy and cooler. You're going to want to dress warm uh, if you have outdoor celebrations for New Year's Eve. And then it stays breezy on Monday. The extended forecast will go 67 Saturday, 70 on Sunday. So Sunday is probably our warmest day. And then with that front, it cools us down for New Year's Day, 58. 50 on Tuesday, we get a 30% chance of rain. So that'll be our next shot at some rainfall, cold rain. 58 Wednesday, 59 Thursday. So cooler next week, cooler to start 2024. And I think uh, we're okay saying goodbye to 2023 with the way those temperatures <laughs> looked this summer, Ursula. Yeah, adios 2023 for sure. Somebody is hoping, though, that tonight is going to be the big night. We got the Alamo Bowl underway, tailgating fast and furious right now downtown. Yeah, it sounds like it and great weather. You can't ask for anything better than that for all the people coming in out of town. A week's worth of festivities and preparations has led us to tonight's Valero Alamo Bowl game. Nick Mantis will be joining us live from the Alamo Dome after the break. Plus, the Spurs open a back to back at Portland tonight. The Trailblazers have moved on from the Damian Lillard era and are now home to the number three overall draft pick, Scoot Henderson. Stay with us. We are just a couple of hours out from the kickoff of the 2023 Valero Alamo Bowl between the 14th ranked University of Arizona and 12th ranked University of Oklahoma. The week leading up to tonight has been full of pageantry. Both teams getting a taste of what it's like to live here in San Antonio. But now the off the field fun is done and kickoff is approaching. So it's time to check in with Nick Mantis at the Alamo Dome to get us ready for tonight's top 15 matchup. How's it going, Nick? Well, Mary, it is starting to get a little bit more exciting here at the Alamo Dome as both teams have now come onto the field. We're getting ready for this top 15 matchup between the 14th ranked Arizona Wildcats and the 12th ranked Oklahoma Sooners. And even though both of these teams are really close in their rankings, people have been looking at this matchup as a David versus Goliath type of matchup because with a win tonight, the Arizona Wildcats will get their 10th win of the season and their only fourth time in program history that they've had a 10 win season. While well, Oklahoma has 42 10 win seasons and seven Heisman Trophy winners. But the Sooners are going to look a little different tonight because they only have 70 scholarship players who are going to suit up for this game. And the biggest name not coming out of that Sooners lock locker room is starting quarterback Dylan Gabriel, who transferred to Oregon. Uh, Arizona's Jed Fish said that he just wants his team to focus on the task at hand and not think about who's going to be in the Sooners starting lineup, while Oklahoma's Brent Venables understands the new landscape of college football. 
I don't blame any of the, the players that are looking for a better opportunity. You got to do it now uh, so that you can maybe have a little more leverage in, in, a, in a place that's a very short, small window with where they have to do what's best for them. And so I'd, uh, I just wanted to say that. You know, just like I told our staff this morning, the next 24, 48 hours, whatever it is until kickoff, now this, we got to just treat this like now we're, we're ready to play a game. It's not about a bowl game. It's not about who we're playing. It's how we always prepare these final. 48 hours and it's got to be us being at our very best again that matchup 8 15 p.m right here at the alamo dome so make sure you get some popcorn and dessert after you finish your dinner tonight for this kickoff which will be an exciting one for this top 15 matchup and one more thing mary that both head coaches wanted to make sure that they made that everybody knew about was that this game even though it's a bowl game and everybody's really excited about it this is more just a celebration of all the hard work that each program has put in to a wild season we're gonna have all the updates for you online and on air for make sure you guys know exactly what went down in this year's valero alamo bowl mary back to you all right, great stuff, Nick. Thank you. All right, the 14 and 25 San Antonio Spurs are prepared to square off against the 8 and 21 Portland Trailblazers tonight in Portland. This is the first time the Spurs are playing the Blazers since they traded their franchise player Damian Lillard to the Milwaukee Bucks. Now their future is their top three draft pick, Scoot Henderson, who came up from the G League. Henderson is coming off of a 17-point performance in Portland's win over Sacramento. A hundred percent. I mean, I think even coming out here, he always used to have his logos all around here and everything. So it's definitely a little different. But uh, I feel like they got baby Dame right now with Anthony Simons. How much he's, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> he looks talented. I haven't seen a ton of him, but Scoot Henderson's a very talented player. Uh, definitely gets his teammates involved, very athletic. So hopefully we can slow him down tonight. Tip-off is tonight at 10. It's the first of a back-to-back -back between both teams. San Antonio rookie Victor Wembanyama is expected to play, but his status for tomorrow is doubtful. We'll see if the Spurs can bounce back from their home loss against Utah on Tuesday night. Good to see Wemby back. Yes. All right. Thank you. We'll be right back.